Brian, that's uh, obviously a tough result to take, especially considering the way on Dalkar could play football was, was physically impossible in that second half. Um, yeah, I thought, well, credit to Sligo for the win, but um, I thought we played. We played football in the second half, we came out and went at them. Um, different to the first half, but the last ten minutes, you couldn't play any football and that, the ball wouldn't move. So, um, you know, we we tried our best, we, every player gave it 100% and we created good chances. Um, we just didn't take our chances today. Sligo Rovers played, uh, obviously they, they were probably easy, it was easier for them to adjust to the direct style that you were going to have to play in these conditions and do you think that was the, the main one where they, they were possibly better at bypassing the midfield than, than Dundalk were? Um, yeah, I think they set out from the from the start to the left back was getting a lot and playing playing in the channels for Danny yeah. North and so on, and it was working for them, you know. They had, um, they changed their setup to what they what they're usually from, and um, it was working for them. They caused us problems in the first half, and um, likewise we caused them problems going forward, you know. Essentially, you know, a lot of teams would go out to, to, to beat Dundalk. You really do have to win the midfield battle. The likes of, you know, Richie Towell, I mean, prior to his injury, Stephen O'Donnell. And it, it has been a, a great season for you, but it, the, the midfield has really been where it's at for Dundalk, hasn't it? Yeah, um, we've, we've got a strong midfield, even without Stephen there. You know, we've got Chris Shield is, is great at his job of holding midfield there. And Richie's, Richie, John Mountney, we've a number of players, you know, that have stepped in yeah. from when, uh, when Stephen went out. So we've got a... We do have a great midfield, but I think all over the park we've got great, yeah. great players, and especially our, our squad. You know, we've got the players coming on off the bench there, like you know, David Shield for a start in the game. So, yeah. um, and finally, you know, it's been a, a very strong start for Dundalk after the the very uh, the shock result in the first game of the season, the last time I saw you. But like, it, it, other than that, it's been a, a very good start for Dundalk, and they're definitely still in that title race. Yeah, we are. But at the same time, we're only one one series of games down, so yeah. a third of the season through. Um, it feels like an eternity with the amount of games we played. I think that's our seventeenth or eighteenth game in two months. Like, but um, yeah, we're we're challenged on all fronts. We're disappointed tonight with um, we're losing the final. Obviously, it's it's yeah. we're devastated, you know. But hopefully, that gives us hunger and, and experience to um, to kick on from because I'm hoping we'll have more cup finals and. Um, in terms of the league, we'll go go all the way and, and challenge. All right, thanks very much. Richie, obviously that's a very tough result to take, especially considering in that second half you, it was impossible for you to play the football that Dundalk are, are so renowned for playing. Yeah, well, good we are. Um, to concede a goal early on is, is very frustrating. It is um, in the manner we did. We know that they were going to do quick free kicks and uh, we weren't tuned in to it. We weren't early on, but I thought after that we, we played some good football and we had some good chances, but when you don't take them, good teams like Sligo will punish you, they will, and they did today, to be fair. Uh, now that the Santa Sports Cup is over, you've, you've got... Eyes all on the the league title race, and it, it looks like you're you're going to be up there challenging again after this first series of games. Yeah, we've had a good start. We have, um, I think, if we win our game in hand, we go top of the league, which is which is nice. Um, we have we have three tough games in Limerick, Drogheda, and Sligo coming up. You know, we have that in a week. So if we can get nine points out of that, it'd be a perfect way to bounce back. You know, um, and like on the start of the season, Dundalk have like obviously a lot of talk coming into the start of the year was uh, was the same paths uh, making all the signings they have, especially the the mound of midfielders they have in that squad but Dundalk have really shown that they, they still have one of those better technical midfields in the league yeah well I think I think the main thing we have is we have a great work ethic we do and um, we work hard as a team and we all work hard for each other we do um, we have a lot of great talented players as well we do like the Daryl Hogan that can create things Pat Hoban you know I don't want to name everybody but yeah. we have some really good players in the team and I think the way we play is, is nice attractive football so hopefully we can we can carry it on for the rest of the season you know what's it been like for you obviously uh, you had one of the, the better seasons you've probably had in your career last year at Dundalk and you know, like a lot of people were like suggesting that maybe you might get that second season syndrome but it doesn't look like you've, you've hit that quite yet. Yeah well I think from last year I've kicked on even more you know I've worked a lot harder over the pre-season and I've worked a lot harder in my games uh, so far this season so I know that I just need to be on top of my game at all times and if I can do that to help Dundalk win the league then it'll be, it'll be a bonus you know. Last year Dundalk were obviously one of the surprise packages after the year they'd had prior to you joining them and you know like they, now with a lot of teams coming out to defend against G and like a lot of teams coming out to not lose against Dundalk it must be harder to play yeah definitely um, I think we've seen it this this year already the likes of Limerick and Bowes and Derry teams like that they come and they, they park the bus a little bit yeah. there, which is which is understandable because the way we play we, we play with a lot of attack and pace we do and teams are afraid they're going to get, get counter attacked by, by that but 
we just need to adapt we do and if we adapt well to it and we can create chances and take them well then we can still win the game you know and finally I feel like I'm asking this every time I speak to you but um, you probably wouldn't have heard the results from today but Hibernian are now in the, the playoffs what have, what have you made of this um, have, you, have you been watching Hibs at all the last while no well I've, I always keep my eye on them obviously because I have a, I still have a lot of friends there um, they're in the playoffs now obviously yeah. I didn't know that so they lost to Kamara today <laughs> leaving them in 11th yeah that's disappointing is, uh, Hibs are a really big club you know and they have a lot of good people in the club um, right through and they have some smashing players as well they do some, some really good up and coming players so hopefully they can win the playoff and they can stay in the SPL you know because as I said they're a massive club and it, a club like that needs to be playing in the SPL they do Alright thanks sir. Danny you've, uh, you've, you've captained that slugger over side to this uh, the Satana Sports Cup and the, the curse is over Yeah it is obviously I think there's been a fair few semi-finals they've got to and, and we went one better this year and so we've, we've come away, we've won it and, and it's, it's fantastic for the club, fantastic for everyone involved and, and it's the first time they've ever won it so can you say, it's, we just all were all buzzing. <laughs> for yourself obviously it, it looked like you were, you were getting visibly frustrated in that game, like not really getting the chances but it, it, it's all worth it in the end. It is, that's it, you, you can get frustrated in the game all you want but as long as we see the game out and get the result that's all that matters and, and we managed to, um, obviously we got an early goal ourselves and, and uh, the game management we did, we, we worked on it and, and we frustrated them and, and I think I think we deserve the win overall. At this stage now you've won everything you can win, it's like our overs, it's uh, a bullet except for the League Cup, like it, it's been a successful few years for you hasn't it? It has yeah, obviously since I came, the first year of the League, the second year of the FAI Cup and now this so unfortunately I ain't got the League Cup yet but it's one I'll be going after in the future. Yeah. Um, do you know, like you've this year, you had a very, very slow start with a lot of losses. But it seems to, like I, like I was saying to you uh, yeah. off the record a while ago, it seems to have all clicked. And now the Slugger Rovers are picking up those points and picking up these big wins. Yeah, like I said to you before, um, it weren't that we were playing bad; we just weren't yeah. getting the results. Yeah. And, and now we, we turn the corner in the league. We've got some good wins. Um, we weren't beaten in a while in the league, so. And now this is a platform to build on, and it can only be good for us. As a striker, it's probably been one of the tougher seasons you've had to have in the League of Ireland, with a lot of teams um, strong in midfield, meaning that you've you've probably had to play up front on your own a lot uh, more so maybe than you would have in, in prior seasons with St. Pat's or Slugger Rovers. Yeah, it is. I think I think the way the game's going, to be honest with you, now I think it's a lot of the one up front sort of thing. Yeah. Um, when I first signed here, Quigg's playing off me, yeah. um, which was good to, good because he creates good chances. Um, we're more of a five man midfield now, but no, at the end of the day, uh, once I do get a chance or two. I I have to make sure I take him and, and that's what it's about. It must be big on confidence to be scoring goals and to be in the team ahead of the likes of Eric Odiambo and, uh, and Sean McGuire who've been, who are obviously very quality strikers. Yeah it is, um, but like I say to be honest with you, uh, well, as long as I'm fit and I'm doing alright I'd back myself to score every game yeah. and whether I do or not it's a different story but the main thing is the team and, and obviously I want to be playing every game and I've, had to en I've endured like a frustrating period at, t at the minute but I was back in today and, and we've won a cup so yeah. I can only be happy you know. Finally Jeff uh, Henderson told me that the, the reason that these results have started coming for you or maybe they wouldn't have in early in the season he was saying that it's, it's purely down to confidence what would you say to a comment like that? Yeah it is it's um, <laughs> A, bit, a lot of luck as well, yeah. um, like, like I was saying to you, like again when we played Shams here, um, I had two chances that, yeah. that and there were the cleared off the line, the yeah, the um, so one was me own play, one was Jeff, yeah. so <laughs> so no, it is, it's luck and, and it is confidence because you, you start getting points on the board and winning games, you have that, you have that fear about you that other teams yeah. think, ah, oh, they're coming here and like when we turn up, we, we, you expect to win, you know, yeah, of course, and, you, yeah. and you go into that, with, uh, you go into the games like that, so it's always, you, you, obviously you want to be winning every game and, and it can only help you. Alright, thanks very much. Gary, um, not many goalkeepers can say they've kept a clean sheet against that Dundalk side and, and, and to win a cup at the end of it as well, it must be a, a big plus. Yeah, look, it's, it's a great bonus, like Dundalk, fantastic side, but um, equally so, we're, we're, we're a pretty good side too and um, we knew that if we um, applied ourselves right, we were plenty good enough to get the result. Uh, technically speaking, Dundalk obviously one of the better sides up there with yourselves and St. Pat's and Cork City as, as the, the sides that will probably be, and Shamrock Rovers, uh, that will probably be challenging for that title and you know, in the, that second half obviously the conditions stopped them from playing football and it was a huge advantage for Slugger Rovers with the lead. Yeah, well I think it only really stopped in the last 10-15 minutes, they had plenty of time yeah. before that, like you know, the ten, last 10 minutes, but I think we were quite comfortable in the second half, we, we contained them quite well and looked quite dangerous on the breaks as well. Not that we sat in, but when you're 1-0 down in a cup final, teams are always going to have a spell 
well. Like I think in the first half after we scored, we continued to play our game and played really well. Um, so look, it, it, this, certainly the last ten minutes was going to be very dif difficult for Dundalk because you couldn't string a couple of passes together, and it was always going to be easier for us to just put the ball in the corner and let them try and work it out for the last few minutes. But that's that's the way you, you kill games. And um, without wanting to say cocky or whatever, but the the save probably um, near the end, I think it was Pat Hoban or David McMillan tried to scoop it over you. What was going through your mind making that? Because that's obviously one of the better saves we're going to see in the Santa Cup this year. Yeah, uh, well, it's the last one you'll see anyway. But it, <laughs> it's uh, look, it, it was Dave McMillan anyway got the touch. It was kind of one of those that it, if he did, he was really stretching for it. So yeah. um, he probably wasn't able to get much support, but he got it on target. And I'm just glad to get a hand on it. So now he's in a good position to make the save. The confidence seems to be uh, all with Slugger Rovers now. Like you're, you're starting to get those results that were just eluding you at the start of the season. Yeah, look, we, we've started keeping a few clean sheets, um, and you know the goals are coming. I think we were probably a bit unfortunate that we created plenty of chances early on in the season, and we had four one one nil defeats, which is well documented at this stage. But um, yeah, like in all of them games, they could have gone either way. We could have drawn them or won them, but unfortunately, we came out on the wrong side. But we've really picked it up now, and hopefully, we'll kick on. What has been the difference in getting those results? Because I can't imagine the, the dressing room morale would have changed at all because you can see like there are games you've won now like even the, I'd say the game here against Shamrock Rovers you probably played better than the game when you beat UCD 5-0 but that's it look you know it, it's funny the way it goes like you get a bit of rubble green in some games and you go on and you get a result that looks a bit false like even there like we played Limerick a couple of weeks ago and we beat them 3-0 but it was a very tight game you know yeah. and it was 1-0 up until the 88 minutes but we, we, we didn't look like losing but like the 3-0 flatters us so yeah. there was games like some of them games where we lost 1-0 we played really well and just didn't get the result like the Shamrock Rovers game but equally so they played well in that game yeah. too, you know. All right, well, thanks very much. Paul, uh, your, your duck is over. You finally won a cup final. What's it like? <laughs> yeah, I've been hearing this duck and jinx thing uh, the last the last week. So yeah, delighted to finally get to, to finally get the win and to finally be able to pick up a trophy and a medal and be on the right side of a, of a final for once. Such an important goal as well. Yeah, I, at the time I didn't think it was going to be. I thought there was going to be a lot of goals in the game. That's the way the game was going and the way that Dundalk play. And I just thought it was going to be a pretty high scoring final. I didn't think it was going to be just the one goal. But we we scored the one goal. We did. A lot of defending in the second half for sure, but I mean, when you have a team like Dundalk coming at you, you have to be smart and play smart. And we did that and soaked up what they threw at us. Possibly uh, not like probably not going to be the easiest game you're going to play. I mean, including uh, these conditions and the way Dundalk like to play in midfield, it was never going to be an easy game for you personally. No, absolutely not. You know, they've got a very talented midfield. They've got talent all over the team, but they're certainly in their midfield. You know, the likes of Richie Tell in there. You know, Darren Meenan on the wings as well, Daryl Horgan and stuff. It's always going to be tough, but the conditions obviously made it extremely tough. But it was tough for both sides. It was going to be found a little bit easier for us because we had that one goal lead to defend, um, so and it's always hard to chase a goal when you're in conditions like that. So we obviously we were delighted to be in that situation, but uh, we had to do a lot of work to make sure that we kept it like that. Uh, you would probably admit yourself it wasn't the the dream start to slugger to your slugger over his career, but uh, yeah. you, you finally seemed to find your form personally and and the team as well. Yeah, I mean it was obviously a very slow start for us in the league. We didn't really we didn't really get going. We obviously started with a win, but after that things went to badly yeah. before losses. But we never really felt we were playing badly. We I think we had one bad performance, but when we were losing, we still felt we were playing well. It was just about the results not going our way, and things started going since in the last six seven games things have sort of gone our way, and we started winning games, drawing games, made sure we got a little a little run going in the league and you know, winning a trophy this early can only be a good thing and, and trying to boost confidence and morale What do you think has been the, the big factor in you finally winning these games because I remember I watched you against Shamrock Rovers here and you lost 1-0 it was a very unfortunate result and you played considerably better than when you beat Athlone 2-1 the last time I'd seen you uh, It's just it's hard to put you it's hard to put your finger it, I mean in, in a lot of games we were going a goal down we were, we, we yeah. were forcing ourselves to chase games and stuff uh, which is always a, teams know how to defend and you, teams get compact when they have a goal lead they, they put their bodies on the line and uh, we, at the moment, you know, we've, we've been scoring first, which has been key. But also the clean sheets that we've been keeping. There's been a lot of them in the recent weeks where we weren't keeping them at the beginning. Yeah. So clean sheets are just it's something for us to, to build on. For yourself, um, since you've been playing League of Ireland, it's probably one of the like technically best leagues you've been playing in. And as a midfielder, the way the teams are, it's, you're probably getting a lot more ball than you would have in prior years. You know, with with Slug obviously having to play a five-man midfield against the likes of St. Pat's against Dundalk, yeah. teams like that. Yeah, of course. I mean, I knew when I was coming here, I'd be, there'd be fierce competition as well in the middle. You know, yeah. obviously with Russell and Joey and David Coley and stuff like that. I mean, and there's plenty of other players that can play in the middle as well. So um, that's you when you come to a club like Slug, you expect that standard. You expect that. 
that competitiveness and it only makes the rest of the players around you play better you know you have to everybody has to raise that game if they want to be staying in the 11 um, is, is it different like as in obviously Sligo Rovers they're, they're never going to come in with, no expe- with low expectations but you know like prior to the year um, it was a bit more low key the, like as in a lot of people talking about St. Pat's yeah. and with the Marquis Sonia Keats Vice, yeah. Shamrock Rovers Stephen McPhail and yeah. yourselves you, you never really made that, that massive signing but it, it, it probably has played to your advantage as well but. yeah I mean when you make those sort of signings it's, it's bound to bring attention towards yeah. you and obviously it's Pat with the champs last year and I mean obviously when you're bringing in those players you know from abroad and it's great for the league but I mean obviously it brings a lot of attention to yourself you know we go yeah. into it and we obviously had a slow start but we've, we, 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 our main thing is to look after ourselves yeah. we can't really be looking out and seeing all the other teams and what's being said about other teams yeah. we don't even listen to what's been said about us yeah. we, we concentrate on ourselves you know even when it was a bad run there was a lot of bad things being said about us but we didn't we didn't read we didn't read into it we didn't care about it and it's we know what, what, what we're about and what we have to do to get ourselves back up the table alright thanks very much